Hello, everybody. How's it going? Hey. It's been, it's been two weeks, which means that it's time for more adventures in Oz-like settings. Um, I'm Strash, he, him. I'm one of the regular streamers here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Strash A. And uh, I'm excited to play Bima, my cat-eared rogue uh, who, who helps the girl by mostly offering her terrible advice and trying to steal things. Uh, Lauren, tell us about yourself. Hey, I'm Lauren. I use Gene A. I co wrote this game with Jesse Ross, um, who's a fantastic human being. Uh, I'll be the guide for this game. Um, and gosh, I can't wait to jump in <laughs> like <laughs> to this fantasy land. We have some cool stuff prepped. I have to say hi to my mom, <laughs> who may or may not be watching this right now. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to dig in. How are you doing, Jen? I'm well. Uh, I, I just messaged Jesse this week uh, to go over something I wrote and he gave me some really good comments. He was really, really helpful. So it was nice uh, because it was, it was for his other game concerning his other game that he wrote a uh, trophy. Uh, and yeah, I'm Judd, uh, he, him, uh, and it's nice to be back. It's always, I'm excited to see what uh, Bima and Thunderbolt and Faye will get up to and excited to see w what's next in the underground. Yeah. Okay. Nice to be back. Okay. Learn. Yeah. Since you're GM, yeah. you want to take it away? Heck yeah. I thought I would do a little a little recap since a lot happened last time. <laughs> and the previous sessions as well. Um, we might start looping back into some of like the stuff that came up in like the first or session or two. So I'll try to like frame that for everyone who was joining us um, midway through. Um, but last time, I seem to recall we picked up in the Bizarre Bizarre because a challenge had been put to the factory um that was adjacent to the bizarre bizarre that was making these knockoff masks um based on sunbrook our artisan mask maker <laughs> the bizarre bizarre um and we had a really cute workshop scene where um Faye, our girl uh made a mask i ever seem to recall it um it had a kind of treasure hunty theme it had like the snake bracelet um the golden snake bracelet on it somewhere that of course it <laughs> came from our above ground like phase home world um it was super adorable uh other things that stick out about that scene uh kind of it. i mean the whole contest was kind of a thing, but uh, yeah, we can move into the contest. This <laughs> in your mind, what do you recall about the contest? Uh, well, before the contest, I think Bima tried checking out the competition and ended up getting spooked and running away. Um, mm. and running into Thunderbolt, we actually had one of the very rare Bima and Thunderbolt scenes with no girl for a hot second. Um, it was kind of adorable. Uh, but in the contest, we actually like faced off against the boss of the. Uh, we actually had a lot of girls standing up for her beliefs and writing some new beliefs. That that was a that was kind of a, a big momentous character changing, scene that you know, uh, that we had there. So yeah, the the we we faced off against the the boss of the factory. We found out that he was tied to the Crow King. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I believe that by like. Facing her fears, eventually the girl actually, like, managed to, to... The biggest thing was that they tried cheating by adding rules off screen and then forcing us to adhere to them. And we were just, like, middle fingers all around. Oh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. A lucrative internship at the factory for the for the winner. <laughs> for, 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 uh, for exposure, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um... And yeah, I, I think we, we, we had to basically tell him no, and your stuff is super unfair, and then uh, face down all of the, you know, troubles and scary things in order to to cause them to to explode into a swarm of crows, if I recall. So Yeah. <laughs> the bone crows, I think, for memory. Uh, did we did we teach yeah, the bone uh, crows. did we teach the, the, the little robots in the factory the fake phase about uh, about unions. Means, yeah, about unions yes. and means of production. Uh, that was a thing. Uh, totally. So totally. Fun. Yeah, totally. Had a, had a break for the first time and loved it and unionized <laughs> to help take down the, the factory. 
so yeah that's uh that's some of the stuff that i remember yeah i remember the bone crows which is selfish because i think I, I they were part of a question that lauren asked and that was part of my answer <laughs> um yeah it was a lot of lauren and thunderbolt a uh, lot lauren good lord Faye and thunderbolt <laughs> uh about you know a lot a lot of them uh navigating difficult situations together i think it was cool it was less i mean i think strash just pointed this out uh you know thunderbolt and thunderbolt's better support for like social difficult situations and and bima is all there for uh you know adventurous and and swashbuckling and and high you know uh the the kind of fun swinging from chandelier stuff and i think this was a lot more difficult uh difficult social uh, situations in this case so it was a lot of a lot of fan thunderbolt which was fun but it might be fun to swatch some buckles today but yeah we'll see what happens i hope so <laughs> um i was thinking where to pick off because like we kind of ended uh at the end of that arc like in the bizarre bizarre arc, like onwards to adventure and i think we were going to head towards um the crowing king's kingdom <laughs> for memory okay. uh and i hmm i kind of like the idea of uh having picking up from that last shot of gia um when she was like all right, like onwards to adventure. And then sort of like cutting to that moment we get in every sort of like journey movie where you're stuck in like the middle of the woods <laughs> and you're not quite sure how you got there or like where you're going, but you like have all that upwards energy and then you're like, oh, like we're not quite there yet. Um, and I, I think, I think what we pick off is like, um, we see Gia who has a book open that she sort of like plucked off of herself and she's like sort of fanning through it going like I, I, I swear to god like this book is this, this way and we should be going in the right direction but I just feel like we're going right around in circles and like uh, <laughs> like she sort of lets out like a really like uh, frustration and like I think um we hear the flutter of like some birds as they like the noise um i think the jungle where the forest run i think is um has this like really good uh gnarled roots that sort of um you can catch easily catch your foot on and the trees here look very ancient there's very deep uh like sort of calves in the bark um i think the leaves are very willowy and sort of draped draped downwards and obscure like most of the sky above us um and there is somewhat of a path, but every now and then it gets obscured by the underbrush and then it sort of comes back and it forks off and you're never quite sure which way to go. It looks very untraveled. Um, and I, ooh, <laughs> I think Gia turns to Fima and says, well, you're a great adventurer. <laughs> How do we get out of this mess? I might actually have a move for this, so just. Could we describe G uh, Gia and maybe Bima oh, too, yeah. like, just kind of reintroduce everybody? Sure. That sounds like a good idea. Um, I can kick off with Gia. Uh, so Gia um, is half girl, half books or half pages, and she doesn't have any legs. She kind of um, hovers and flutters around. Um, and she, we met her and her sisters uh, a couple of episodes back uh, where she was being kept in the attic <laughs> um, from her sisters for being rules. Uh, and I think that's all I really described of her very energetic. How about, yeah, tell us about Bima. Uh, Bima is a master thief, uh, self-described as such, of course. Uh, she's got... Uh, cat-like eyes that glimmer in the light as she's got a weird shadowy umbilical cord that acts as a tail more often than not because she's actually missing her shadow. Uh, she has uh, two sort of curved claw-like looking knives that she pulls out on occasion and she seems to have more than two hidden somewhere. Uh, she has like a like a 
a long coat that is reminiscent of, of uh, maybe like a pirate or something. Uh, like it's got buttons that are never buttoned up and that kind of thing. Uh, and she's got tussled sort of semi curly hair. And uh, yeah, she's uh, she's got a lot of feline traits, uh, uh, a lot of grace and a lot of twitchy noses and, and tends to cartwheel and flip about a lot and stuff like that. So. Uh, but I think, uh, Bima, like, huffs and puffs and, and, and looks at Gia in, uh, um, you know, and, and says, I never claim to be a great adventurer. I am only a great thief. Uh, and thieves need things to steal, which they notably don't have in forests. And she, like, kicks a rock as if she's, like, a little bit grumpy. Uh, Aww. and she says, fine, fine, fine. If you are lost and you don't know the way, then I will, of course, have to do something about this. And uh, she pulls out her, her two little knives and uh, she's going to try and scamper up a tree to get a, a, a view from above and see if she can discern a path. Oh, um, cool. I don't, uh, I think I have a way to look for secrets in a location, but I don't know that I have a way to look for a path through a location per se. Um mm. I think it makes sense for the path to be like a secret if it's like kind of obscured and like uh, a bit hidden away. The other thing to talk about is uh, I do have a I do have a move for leading people through a dangerous situation, but I don't feel like we're in actual danger here. Mm. Uh, so uh, are are we in danger of being lost? Is that sufficiently dangerous? Are these woods actually <laughs> rumored to have uh, troubles and problems or or? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, I think like, I think it's hard to discern like any immediate danger, but it-, it Great. In which case <laughs> I will offer the GM a golden opportunity. I will say, I will 100% whether I see one or not, lead my friends towards what I believe is the way out. Excellent. Um, <laughs> what happens, GM? <laughs> what happens, GM? Awesome. So I think like, ooh. I think from the distance you see smoke and it's kind of hard to discern at first because it's like a sort of haze of mist um, that seems to hang like around the tops of these trees, even though you can't really, it's not super misty down where you are, but when you go once you get above, it's like kind of hard to make out um, the, the horizon and the lay of the, the forest, but you do catch, capture a sight of like the darker smoke that's sort of billowing from a place. It looks like it could be like a, Hut? A village or a hut or something like where you might be able to get directions, um, and uh, I think like is it just like ooh. smoke for warmth or is there the smell of food on the smoke? I think it's far enough away where it's kind of hard to like discern food. Actually, hmm. No, I think you, I think you do catch on the air the scent of um, like it smells kind of like barbecue. <laughs> uh, yeah, that sort of smoky, like sweet, um, that yeah, very smoky, sweet smell. Um, and I think I think as you walk further into this forest and step over errant tree roots um you kind of feel the ground like sink underfoot as the ground does like when it's sort of lined with thick pine needles and that kind of thing um and as you head further towards the smoke um, you start to catch the odd sesiris in your ear. But if you turn, there's like no one there. And it could have just been the breeze. It could have just been like some rustling leaves. <laughs> um, and I think maybe at one point even GS is like, who said that? Then I sort of looks accusatorily at the group. <laughs> Judd, you got Faye? 
Yeah, I got her. All right, Excellent. I think uh, I think Bima twitches her nose twice and just steps backwards until there is a her form is shadowy, but her eyes are you know cat bright, and then a couple seconds later she like fades out completely. So uh, I think uh, I'm gonna let the group keep moving in the right direction, and I'm going to try and suss out exactly what it is that is following us or perhaps ahead of us. Uh, I think now maybe is the time to roll to discover the forest secrets, yeah? That sounds good, yeah. Uh, cool. I do not think that I have any, uh, that I'm, I'm standing up for any beliefs here, but, uh, so I'm just gonna roll with, with 2d6 and see what I get. The worst. Oh, no. <laughs> what, did you, what, did, what did you roll? Literally a two. Snake eyes. It's all good. Oh, no. A two. Okay, so let's look at the move quickly. When you look oh, for I, the forest secrets. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What unexpected thing did I come across instead? Um, oh, neat. I think you come across... Um, You trip over something, I think, and not enough to like sort of fully face plant, but when you look down, it's not a root that's like caught your foot. It's like this really, it's this grimy goblet. <laughs> um, it, it's like covered in dirt, but if you sort of wipe it away, you can see it's like sort of glimmering gold like beneath the dirt and there's like jewels like in the room. It looks like a very expensive like piece of um, treasure. <laughs> What's that doing here? I, uh, of course, uh, cannot, cannot help but dig it up, but I, I check it to see if it's, like, actual treasure, because, like, who loses gold and jeweled goblets in the middle of the woods? And I think, like, when you pick it up, um, the teapot that's, like, been in your, on your person, like, sort of, uh, catapults its way up to your shoulder, and then sort of, like, it's, like, sort of sniffs around the goblet, and, like, I think cozies up to it and sort of, like, brushes it a bit. <laughs> Your strange little teapot. Hmm. <laughs> I think do, you, it, do, do you want this? I think it, it like, pause. <laughs> like, you get up here, like, at the top of that teapot, like, ripples with, like, um, appreciation. I mean, okay. I guess you need something to pour your tea into. Uh, <laughs> jeweled goblets, I guess, will do. Uh, I, I look around. Is there anything else here? Like, is there any indication? Like, was it a, a single piece that fell over and got stuck in the muck? Or... Is it Ooh. part of something else? Like, is there, like, when I pull it up, is there a hand attached to it? Or, like, I don't know. <laughs> I think when you, if you look around, like, you can see, um, if you peer at the ground beneath you, you can see the imprint of, like, footsteps. So it could have been, like, a, a drop trinket or something. But then these footsteps become bigger. And instead of, like, five toes, it's morphed into, like, Four, and it looks a bit like a claw. <laughs> well, we fought werewolves before. I know how this works. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think Faye is like crouched near the ground next to Bima, and like they both like I don't know what Bima's doing, but Faye is just shaking her head and goes, "Werewolves again." <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Judd. I listened to Daydreaming About Dragons today, and there's this one point where Judd in the middle of it just goes, werewolves, it's the number one ancient problem like all villages have, or something like that. And I just, I had to stop in the middle of my walk and laugh. So yeah, this is one of these, just like, apparently every forest has got them. <laughs> and I think when uh, Faye says that, you can feel like the hair in the back of your neck, like, prickle and prick up a bit, and you hear, I think, like, the mist, I think, is started to, like, encroach upon you further as you've been taking out this goblet. You can hear, like, that ominous howl from, like, the wolf wood that you heard before. We should see if we can get Thunderbolt to get us closer to town. Last time I faced a... Last time I faced a wolf, I... I, I was laid up for, a, like, a couple of days. Um, I don't particularly want to look for trouble if we don't have to look for it. Yeah werewolves forests are lousy with them she says i think it's definitely like something her father said like would say like something is lousy with something else you know and then uh, I, think, yeah. I think when you said like you know your father you swear you catch a sniff of pipe smoke and 
Edmund. Which is uh, nice. from the previous episode. <laughs> yeah. What we established, um, Faye's absent father figure. Um, so yeah, I think like when you say like, oh yeah, like my my father raised it, that it's like you, you, the peppermint and the pipe smoke like, comes back. And um, cool. Uh, do we want to merry go round? I didn't say the wrong one thing. Uh, do you want to merry go round <laughs> to uh, to? I'll, I'll I'll grab Thunderbolt. Yeah, sure. Uh, cool. Although, to be real with you, Bima actually has a move for this. This is the like GTFO move. Uh, so I have I have yeah, a feeling. Yeah, then, then, then let's keep it. Let's keep it what it is then. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think this is probably actually the point at which uh, um, when when you find yourself in a dark or scary situation, tell the girl. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, roll when you try to escape a dangerous situation with your friends. So. Uh, I think this is the point where, like, Bima just says, like, all right, Gia and Faye, uh, let's see if Thunderbolt can give you a, a lift. I'm, I'm, you know, and then, like, we can just book it towards uh, where the, the smell of smoke is coming from and hope that civilization, light, and fire will keep the, the wolves at bay, as it, uh, as it may be. So, but I think, I think Bima is just, like, she probably just, like, scratches her nose a couple times. It's just, like, we should book it. Um, so if it's cool... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and lead my friends uh, towards where, where I saw that smoke yeah. and away from danger. Awesome. Faye, uh, double knots or sneakers? Oh, <laughs> I think um, as Bima, you look for a way out. You definitely are brought back to that moment when um, you felt quite powerless in the face of the boss and that you couldn't like fight back against him and you had to run away. It's all good. Sometimes running is the right answer. All thieves know this. Sometimes the <laughs> lights come on and, and the gig is up and you just gotta book it. Uh, let's uh, let's GTFO out of this problem, child. I was just checking the girls' uh, beliefs, but I don't think I don't think any of them apply. Our girl is very straightforward on these topics. It's usually fight the problem, not run away. That's all right. Hey, I got an eight, which isn't too bad. Uh, Wait. On an eight. On a 79. Uh, ask the guide, how will the people here remember me? That seems Ooh, odd, but all right. That's okay. This, this bar is kind of alive. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Let's, let's rock with that. Um, yeah, so I think, like, um, you... As you go to leave, you can kind of feel that consciousness of the forest, like pluck at you a bit more like with desperation as you seek a way out of it um and i think like that susier swells on everyone's ears and that smell of peppermint and pipe smoke and like that, that prickling feeling on the back of your neck um from the wolf wood returns and the you can hear these very vicious whispers um tell bima that you're a coward <laughs> like, that you hide behind a facade and that they you know deep down that you are the reason that you pushed your parent away and that when they came to you you didn't accept them and like that thunderbolt is a talker but not a doer and like we'll never nice <laughs> Poor Thunderbolt. Um, That's unfair for us. Just unfair. <laughs> what did Thunderbolt ever do to you? Uh. <laughs> and so I think like you can and you can feel these whispers sort of like at the at your heels and like at your elbow. This is like yeah. you lead everyone like out of out of um, this place. Yeah, it's funny because Thunderbolt was gonna say this earlier, but I shouldn't have a moment. But he's like, you know, coniferous trees uh when they when they drop their needles, change the acidity of the ground so that other trees can't take root. They're not nice trees. Yeah, they're assholes. Uh, they're kind of they're kind of the assholes of the forest. So let's not take let's take this with a big grain of salt. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I think I think Bima hisses very cat like at the trees, and it's just like, piss off trees. <laughs> <laughs> at least I can run. Ha! She like kicks a tree needlessly and just keeps keeps jogging. Oh, I love it. Um, and I'm assuming you lead people to, like towards that sort of barbecue smell of smoke and like, people safety. <laughs> um, 
um uh was was like was barbecue like the takeout food when uh mom and dad couldn't get dinner together like is that is that a thing oh yeah that could totally that could totally be a thing I, that sounds lovely <laughs> um yeah and i think you like you run through you run through the forest um and avoiding sort of like the wicked thorns in the air and like their roots beneath your feet um and i think those phrases and sounds like build the further away you get until like they stop and then it's just like eerie quiet um you find yourself in a clearing um with the dark mouth of a cave in front of you with like this is like smoke is coming out from it you can the, the, the smell of barbecue is like richer in your nostrils uh like, so the the, the, like the cave is someone's someone's house i see <laughs> yeah 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 it definitely like um it feels alive like it, it just feels like um a hovel or a place like someone is is living um and you can get it there's like some bones like around the place um i think there's like another um and you find like a coin <laughs> uh like under underfoot um on the, on the ground sorry uh yeah what do you what do you do <laughs> um i think Faye knocks on the side of the cave politely says excuse me and i think you hear like this very throaty yawn um that kind of like develops into a bit of a growl and <laughs> i just swear no, Pima's I'm... reaction to this is oh shit i hate dogs <laughs> but yeah <Aww. laughs> and you hear a voice um from and you hear like a thud thud of like something rousing you can see like a very thick black shadow like on the cave wall um as this uh woman emerges um like a lot smaller than like those sounds would uh belie <laughs> and she i think rubs an eye um and i think what did she look like she i think she is wearing um ooh, I think she's wearing, it looks like quite a humble cloak. And then when she moves, it shimmers in the light like scales. Um, and you sort of catch the sort of oil, oily rainbow um, effect like on her garments as she moves. And she says like, I, I wasn't expecting visitors. Uh, um, Judd, if you, uh, there's no, there's no pressure, but if you want to marry go around, let me know. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with it for a little bit. All right. Um, in case we need to hoof it or whatever. Sounds good. She says, uh, I'm sorry, we didn't mean to interrupt. It's just the forest was being very negative and we thought we should get out of there. Mm, that's rather why I moved here. It's, uh, it's a good, it's good protection for isolation. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bother you if you wanted to be left alone. Um, we'll just collect ourselves and, and figure out where to move next. If, if you want some alone time. No, I must say I'm rather intrigued. Uh, what is your name? I think, like, as, as Faye opens her mouth to answer, like, Bima just, like, flashes right in front of her. This is the first time I'm using a move. I'm sorry, Jed. <laughs> and just says, I am Bima the Great, Master Thief of all the kingdoms. And, like, proceeds to, like, spout out a bunch of uh, completely made-up factoids about herself. Um, so, uh, I have a move. Uh, it was called, It Was This Big. When you meet someone important, tell them of your magnificent adventures. Uh, and then I have a chance to, to pull out some information about the location from them. Uh, oh, excellent. Or they might have already heard of me, which would be very bad. That uh, is su super great. <laughs> uh, does a belief apply to this situation? Oh, that's a good question. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it lies, 
see anything coming. <laughs> now, the one I was looking at is sometimes the wrong action is better than no action. I think that is Bima's <laughs> motto. All right. Excellent. Let's do it. Uh, here we go. Hey, I got a seven. Not too bad. Not too bad. So on a Excellent. seven, uh, on this move, uh, I can say, oh, uh, Uh, well, actually, it says, ask another companion which part of my story is untrue. Well, I didn't detail my story, but, uh, I probably... It's a good story. Feel free to detail it. Uh, actually, I, I will, I will talk about the last time I, I killed a werewolf in a forest. Uh... Oh, nice. Yeah, because, uh, p- poking a, another possible shapeshifter is totally never going to go wrong here. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I totally, like, talk about, you know, the great battle that I had against the Prince Wolf in the last forest that we were in and, and how awesome that was. And, and, uh, yeah, how, how, uh, you know, I am, I'm Beam of the Great, Master Thief and Slayer of Werewolves. (laughs) So, um, so yeah, what, what is it that I, that I judge? What is it? What what, would, what would Thunderbolt say is the falsehood in my story here? (laughs) Uh, Is it is it that it wasn't really a werewolf? It was a prince posing as a werewolf. Is that? That's fine. Yeah, that's okay. that sounds good. I, I can yeah, I think he like well actually is Bima, and he's like well, I mean actually it was a, a prince posing as a werewolf. It was more like a prince cosplaying as a werewolf almost. I mean, I don't even know if if it was a real like. <laughs> you know, uh, Oxford English Dictionary Lycanthrop, but I mean, it was definitely uh, uh, an unfriendly humanoid wolfy thing. So I, 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 I get that. Sure. And I, I think the woman like laughs and shakes her head and shoots Faye quite a wry smile and says, isn't it funny how princes regardless of the forms they take, inevitably turn out to be wolves. I think Faye, like, thinks on that and is like, I don't think I'm old enough to get that joke. <laughs> and he says, never mind. Maybe when you're older. Um, but, uh, no, it's funny you uh, mention a shape-shifting royal of sorts. I am not royal myself, but um, I am somewhat of a legend. We all wait with bated breath. (laughs) (laughs) Really? (laughs) Um, I think, like, you can see that she, like, sort of fast in the attention for a moment. You get the feeling she hasn't, like, really talked to people, like, that much. Um, Too real, Lauren. Too real. (laughs) Go on. Um, so I apologize. No, no, it's fine. Um, and she says, well, I guess you talk to any other uh, person on the street and they are either sure I don't exist or they're sure I will eat everyone one day, but I am just your friendly neighborhood dragon. Well, you don't look very dragon-like, ma'am. I'm not... Actually, I don't think I've ever met a dragon. <laughs> And I think like she laughs again and like grins just enough to like see some like her, her teeth are quite pointy and like um what is it consummate V's <laughs> consummate V's consummate V's, oh, consummate V's. <laughs> <laughs> um and like she, when she laughs like you can I, I think a lick of like fire comes out of her nostrils um and she says well <laughs> this is this is how i present myself to people when i don't want to appear too terrifying but i can show you if you like yeah i would like <laughs> she's like okay she sort of closes her eyes um and then i think like uh sh- her robes seem to sort of like melt onto her form and then sort of draw out like along her arms and like upper fingertips and like over her head and um you see sort of like brimstone fire like underneath uh, the scales is like she grows bigger and like her shoulder contorts and like her limbs get longer and the, like a large tail like comes out of like her um hip bones and uh you can and i think like 
when she's like in her full form, she gives her like head a bit of a shake like a dog and like sort of um, shakes off <laughs> like uh, the errant magic in the air and then sort of like looks to the group like, like see. <laughs> what, what, co- what color is the dragon and does she oh, have wings? She definitely has wings. All right. Um, and I think what what color should she be? You you were you were describing her scales in her human form as opalescent, and I didn't know if it carried right because like. Ooh yeah, let's do opalescent scales. I said right. super cool. Uh, in which case, uh, Viva's like, "Whoa, cool! I can't do yeah, that." Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Faye is like, if, "If I look like that, I would never hide it ever." <laughs> That's oh, awesome. Hey, like, like the dragon, like. She tried to come off like I like I am in control here. Now she's like, oh, <laughs> um, I'm flattered. Uh, oh, but- is this your cup? Stop! I- stop! Stop! Please! Stop! 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 <laughs> yeah, just a little more. Just a little more. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, yes, yes, yes. I mean, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she looks at Faye and she looks at Faye and says, y- "You could look this way too if you liked." What? Well, yes. And I think, and you too, and some gestures to G. And G, and G is just like, oh, I don't know if I want to date her or be her. Kind of thing. Like, <laughs> I'm just very, very taken. Um, I think Vima's like, on one hand, so awesome. On the other <laughs> hand, so hard to steal things, but awesome. But steal things. <laughs> and then the, I think the dragon, like, does a little flourish. It's like, yes, uh, these magics are not difficult to tap into if you have the fortitude to for them. Do you mean not difficult for you or just not difficult? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's a really good question. Well, it's been a long, long, long time since I took on an apprentice. But they seemed to pick it up, no problem. Who's your apprentice? <sighs> Is it the Crow King? <laughs> Sorry, I just... <laughs> <laughs> took the <laughs> plot book right out of my mouth um, sorry <laughs> big reveal <laughs> my bad no it's all good it's all good it's good um yeah she like she uh like sighs and says granted <laughs> power of course comes with responsibilities and I feel it is best if we speak not of this apprentice of mine. But young face, something tells me that you are someone who has principles and values that could sustain that sort of power. You think so? Why, yes. I can see it all around you. And just like it sort of takes a claw out and sort of draws around your outline. It takes wow. a lot of it takes a lot of courage to make it all the way through the whispering woods. I would I would love to. I would love to learn that. I think uh, Thunderbolt, just taking a step to Thunderbolt for a second, says, uh, well, with great ability comes great accountability. Uh, I think that's how that saying goes. (laughs) With great power comes great responsibility? It was from Into the Spider-Verse. Sorry. (laughs) One of my favorite lines. Oh, it's it's, it's actually like straight up from Spider-Man number one, I think. Oh, no, 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 no. I know uh, with great, I know with great power, but uh, in in Into the Spider-Verse, his dad Ad is talking to him. And oh, he I says, see. Well, with ability comes great accountability, and he goes, "Dad, that's not how it goes." <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. It's, it's an amazing. I mean, I could, yeah, I could. I should probably watch that movie every day. Uh, you you should watch it at least once more, so that there's more inspiration good for next time. Uh, but totally. Uh, yes. Uh, I, yes, but Faye is in. Like she's like, I would love to learn. Oh, that's amazing, Faye. What do you think your wizard name would be? I get a wizard name. Yeah, whatever name you like. I mean, think about it. 
Can you name a wizard? Well, I mean, Merlin's the obvious one, right? Merlin then... the Wise. Huh. Gandalf the Grey. All wizards have names. You would be Fae. Oh, the something. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know. I guess I'd have to just discover that on the way. Yeah, that might be part of your training. Cool. How Is this start? yours? I think uh, Bima just turns around and offers the goblet to the dragon. Uh, <laughs> and the dragon, uh, like, takes a claw, a paw out. Oh, oh, dragons have claw paws. Um, and so, like, takes the, takes the goblet and says, like, oh, yes. I guess I must have misplaced that. And she spies the teapot and says, oh, you met my uh, sister. I met a villager. Uh, gave me a whistle. I show the whistle. Whistle helps me find the teapot. I toot toot at it. Oh, so strange. The last time I saw this combination, it was uh, when my sister came to visit some hundreds of years ago. Uh, the tea maker, Panya. Oh, I totally met your sister, and yeah, it was great. She seems very nice. I, I shoot I'm... eyes at the teapot, like, don't tell him you were stolen. <laughs> Terrifying dragon. And with the teapot, sort of like, I think just like the caterpillar nose out to out to um, the dragon, and the dragon says, well. I would be remiss to part such fast friends. It seems that uh, this teapot has taken quite a liking to you. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, I think Bima looks at the teapot and is just like, I'm not really sure uh, what I would do with it. I don't really drink a lot of tea. And also I'm not certain that teapots are excellent uh, thieves, but you know, <laughs> it's nice to, to, to have a friend. And uh, the dragon says, of course, like, if I may for a moment, and takes the teapot out and, like, I think scratches it under the chin. <laughs> and it gives, like, a little, like, wee! Like, a, like a, this delighted sound um, at the at his spout. Um, and she says, well, we will, of course, need to make use of this teapot if you are to dabble in some newfound powers, babe. Come. And she, like, sort of leads her way into, like, the, the like, this dark cave. Um, and it has sort of like the very typical torches on the walls that sort of like cast shadows about the place. And there's this like piles of, um, treasure, <laughs> like a sort of lining <gasps> bits and pieces, like, yeah, all over the place. Do not like, steal treasure from the dragon. Do not steal treasure from the dragon. Do not steal treasure from the dragon. Okay. Maybe just one piece. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like sort of more and more piles like build up in the further end you go. Um, and the cave, I think, emerges into this uh, sort of cavernous area. There's like stalactites that kind of come down in various crystalline uh, colors and sort of stalagmites that, that do the same. And this um, bobble, like sort of uh, sort of soccer ball sized uh, bobbles with um, this sort of pastel mist that sort of floats in them. And there's um, jewels and then there's a lot of other humble stuff, <laughs> like just a, a really shitty wooden bookshelf with some books on it, and then like of course a cauldron and um, a wooden table with bits and pieces on it, and um, and yeah, you can see that barbecue smell like comes on real strong uh, from like the, the fire that she has going. Um, cool. Yeah, Faye goes right up to the bookshelf. Ooh, what book do you find? What book, book catches your eye? Uh, the Wizard of Earthsea. Oh, from your <laughs> from your homeworld. All right, mm -hmm. that's super cool. Secretly, it... one of my favorite fantasy books of all time. <laughs> what happens when you flip through it? Uh, I am reminded of the time I read it, um, and of the mistakes Jed made. Uh, when he was training. Yeah. Aww. It is a book that's a lot about the mistakes wizards make. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to teach me true names? 
Uh, no, that is, that's not quite my domain, but I uh, could get you in touch with a good witch if that is what you what oh, you okay. seek. No, no. I mean, I, I'll I'll learn whatever you're you're teaching. Okay. Um, and I think she she goes to like this bookshelf. And there's like some uh, vials on it of like various ingredients, and um, I think as she approaches it, she uh, sort of like um, what's her name? I forget her name. Like the dragon form. Um, sort of shrinks down and she takes on like a human persona again to navigate her way around her little hovel area. Um, and she says things like, she pops up in a vial and is like, ah, oh, yes, like, dragon's breath blossoms for courage. <laughs> and um, some violet pepper for heat and spice that you do most. And of course, you could forget grit. You need grit. And um, sort of like crumbles up these ingredients into into the teapot, and um, takes a kettle from the fireplace and pours the uh, hot water into it and lets it and lets it brew. And she says, "I this is a trick that I picked up from my dear sister." Um, and it should. And I know that I know that. Um, the way she typically goes about things is to let your insides speak to you and what you need. But this, this will put hair on your chest. Is that a or good your, thing? In your soul. <laughs> this will give you the fire that you need to take down the people who would oppose you. Nice. And she pours out a cup and like slides it over to Faye. May I ask what's in this? Uh, well, yes, there is um, dragon's breath blossoms, violet pepper. Of course, as I say, grit. Grit is very important. And some sour cherries for <laughs> um, the people who would laugh at you and put you down. It should be very spicy, but very sweet and just a bit smoky. Hmm. It, should give you, it should give you the fire that you need. Okay, if it's part of my training, she uh, she quaffs it. Yeah. <laughs> and what like fantastic magical thing happens like when you cough it down? Um, I think I burp fire. Yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I think Gia like uh, covers her pages <laughs> and takes a step back, but it's like, wow, that was so cool. I want to do that. Right? Right? I think Gia looks at the dragon and says, like, Dragon, I spent a lot of my time being half this and half that, but I would like to be a whole thing all of the time or some of the time, kind of like you. Is there a, is there a way I could do that? And dragon's like, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, she's good at transformation magic. Hmm. <laughs> And G is like, I would, I would love to, I would love to, like, sometimes I want to be a, a full person and sometimes I just want to be a book and like hide away from everything and just like really go into my own world sometimes, Dragon's Lake. Ah, uh, yes. I understand that feeling completely. And then I think, um, says so like, I... I made something for you. I must give you my mother to, to concoct it, but in the meantime, I think she paused for a second cup <clears throat> and she says, there's a reason that I put that forest around, or there is a reason that this, I chose this place to be my home, started by this forest. Mm -hmm. And it's that I spent a long part of my life taking on the weight of words that meant nothing. Taking on the words of people who didn't really know me. And the only panacea I found to 
turn those words around was to embrace it fully and then burn it to pieces. To snuff out all those voices. Let them burn in the fire of your soul. I'm sorry. Do you mean me metaphorically burn the voices out from so from your head that's listening to them? Or do you mean burn the forest down? Oh. Metaphorically, metaphysically, physically, who's to say, but... Um, I would appreciate it if you did not burn down the forest that keeps you safe. <laughs> That's good. I, I, that would make me uncomfortable. But tell me, Faye, has there been a time in your life where words have gotten to you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Where words have gotten to you. I um, that. Um, there's a bully at school and he says things to get a rise out of me. What does he say? Uh, he talks about uh, uh, my dad being gone and and Just mean stuff, mostly mean stuff about my dad. Uh, I see. <clears throat> and is that a spot that is tender in your heart? Yeah. I find it best if one holds on to that tenderness. And then creates a very dragon, a dragon shell skin around it, if that makes sense. I'm not sure I understand. Hmm, how to put this in human words. You shouldn't forget the pains that you hold, the, the things that keep you tender and keep you soft. But you shouldn't be afraid to punch someone if you really need to. That's good advice. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think she, and then she looks at Faye and says, "Like, I get the feeling you, well, hmm. What would you say to this bully if you could? This me you haven't already. I would say that." I don't know. What do you say to someone who's saying things just because, I mean, it's probably because his dad says mean stuff to him. So how do you talk to someone like that? That's a good question. Not yeah, really. Just... You tell him to piss off, just like I did the trees. <laughs> Sorry, Bima, you... Bima, Bima's attitude on, on, on bullies is 100 here. <laughs> I think, like, in that office, I think, catch the dragon's attention. She turns it towards Bima and says, like, oh, have you um, experienced similar in your life? Mm. What? People saying mean things to me? All the time. Can't let it get to you. Mm, you say that, and yet I get the sense that at one point it did. Whatever. It's behind me. I don't even have to talk about it. I see. She brushes off her shoulders. Ain't got, ain't, ain't, ain't got time for that. Hmm. She, uh, she puffs up her chest and like takes a couple steps forward and says like, you can't be the greatest thief in the land if you let things like that keep you down. I see. The dragon says like, uh, yes, I appreciate your fire and I appreciate the hurt that you hold. But... You've got to let it go at some point. You have to stop running from what you're running from. And then um, she 
I think I like, claps her hands and says like, well, I apologize. I got very deep for a second. Um, but <sighs> babe, while I think you make a good apprentice, I get the sense that you are have other things you must do. You can't waste away months or years under my wing. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make make a a promise I couldn't keep. Yeah, I I, I would have to leave before that. It is very well. I can give you some uh, some of this concoction, some of this brew, along with brew for Gia, and may it save you well on your way. But if you find your way back here someday, sometime. You're welcome to take on an apprenticeship with me. Thank you. Well, hang on. You said that 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 changing yourself might might be pretty quick. How long do you think learning one trick would take? Uh, well, I could teach you one trick. <laughs> I think Bima shrugs your shoulders. She says, "We're not exactly in a rush, and it looks like the lady has plenty of food and and supplies. I'd be willing to hang out here for at least a couple days." That would be deli delighted for the company. Nice. Tiba likes it here. Gia seems happy. How are you feeling, Bima? Shall we have a training montage? Or, I'm yeah. sorry, how, how do you feel, Faye? Shall we have a training <laughs> montage? Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> montage! We're going to take a quick break first and then uh, come back for a training montage. So the yeah. Yeah, totally. I feel uh, like... It's about on the hour-ish. Yeah, yeah, I, th I totally think we can, we can totally do that. All right. Well, oh. folks, uh, we will be back. We'll take a we'll take a quick break, and, and uh, we should be back in just a couple of minutes. So uh, hang around, and uh, we'll have more adventures with our girl lost in a, in a strange world and her, her stalwart companions here in a moment. 